Today we're going to discuss how you can film videos of yourself and make them look more cinematic as well as some of the mistakes you should be avoiding. Making cinematic videos does have a lot of advantages. It can help you tell a better story, help make the video more engaging for your viewers, and also help you just overall get better as a content creator and or filmmaker. Most of the techniques we're going to discuss are all going to be related to audio, lighting, and camera placement, both for indoor and outdoor filming. And also all of the gear that we're going to be discussing and the gear that I'm using to make this video will be linked below in the description of this video to make things easier for you. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, first we need to discuss gear. Gear does matter to a big extent. Having the right gear and the right accessories can make your life a lot easier, but this does not mean that you have to go out there and spend a couple of thousand dollars on the latest and greatest cameras and lenses. First off, cameras. The number one camera that everyone should be looking at is going to be your telephone. Now, as long as you have a smartphone that's been produced in the last five years, you're in good shape. Although the phones are not going to be the perfect camera for every scenario, it is a great starting point. They are super versatile, and I still use my phone as my main B-roll camera when I'm actually capturing footage outdoors. Now, beside the black rectangle that we carry in our pockets called our phones, there are three other main cameras. The first camera, you're actually looking at the footage coming out of it, is going to be a full frame mirrorless camera. Now, this is currently being shot on the Sony ZV-E1, which was released about one year ago. I currently have one of the Sony shotgun microphones that just connects right into the hot shoe. And I've got a nice 20 millimeter F1.8 wide angle, wide aperture lens. You can see how if I turn the aperture up, we can get the background nice and blurry, which does add to that cinematic feel, that cinematic look of having the blurred out background, allowing the viewer to be focused on the subject. Up next, we have a smaller camera that fits in your pocket, something like the DJI Pocket 3. There was a lot of hype around this camera when it first came out, and I'll be honest, I thought it was overhyped, but I've had it for a couple of months now, and I can honestly say this is pretty much all you need. It's got great stabilization. It creates a great image. Although it's not going to be as good in low light as a bigger sensor camera, and it's not going to have the same dynamic range and give you the best color science, it is by far the best bang for your buck camera for YouTube and just content creation. The next and final type of camera is going to be action cameras. My weapon of choice is going to be the DJI Osmo Action 4. This is a great camera. It is super easy to use. The audio sounds really good. Battery life is good. Colors are good. Overall, everything about this camera is awesome, and this one's actually super cheap, $300 on Amazon. It's rugged, it's robust, you can throw it across the room. It's designed to be used and abused. Anything you can throw at these types of cameras, these are great options, and I find they're very underutilized by a lot of people. Up next, we're gonna talk about tripods. Now generally you want to have a couple of small tabletop tripods like this one from Ulanzi or this one from Manfrotto. You want to have some taller, bigger tripods as well. Now tripods like this one from Ulanzi and this one from I think UB size, these are great because you could actually mount some accessories like I just have a light right here and this extends almost all the way. It basically stands that high from the floor. This is really great just because you can now just move the accessories, move the lights or microphones around the room and around your setup. You don't always have to worry about having a ledge on the side over there. Now, if you're going to go ahead and be putting your big expensive full frame or mirrorless camera on a desk, you want a tripod that's a bit sturdier like this one from Ulanzi. You don't want to skimp out on a tripod for an expensive camera. When it comes to desktop tripods, for your full frame cameras, be very careful. I like this one from Ulanzi or this one from Manfrotto. This is just their Pixie Pod, I believe. It's the, it's pretty old, it's been out for a while. It just has that nice ball head adjustment. You can't raise this one. However, I find because it's so low, it's, I'd feel perfectly comfortable putting my expensive Sony camera pretty much on any ledge anywhere. Whereas something like the Ulanzi desktop one, if you extend it all the way up, the taller it gets, the less stable it gets. Now I'm currently using that Ulanzi tripod I just showed you, just because I wanted to show you the tripod that I mostly use when I'm actually just placing the camera around 
the bedroom or around the apartment. It is this Ulanzi Ombra tripod, $80, doesn't break the bank, really sturdy. It packs in all the way right there. So, and I think it's about two and a half pounds, but this one, absolutely, this is the best tripod I have for this camera. Something like this is going to be great for setting your camera up. You don't have to rely on finding a ledge or finding a good sturdy surface. You could just simply use the ground, and as you saw before, it extends this high, which is perfect for those eye level shots so that when you're standing up, it actually looks like the camera is you know, it looks like I'm actually talking to you and you're standing right next to me. Next on the list for gear is going to be microphones. Microphones are non-negotiable when it comes to filming any video. Now you do have a couple of options ranging from super budget to super expensive. The most budget friendly option is going to be something like this, the Rode Video Micro 2. It can be had for under $100 and it actually sounds pretty decent. I actually just connected it up when we are hearing the Rode Video Micro 2 right now. I was using this microphone, the Sony ECM-B10. So you could see, although it doesn't sound quite as good, this is just a normal raw audio coming out of the microphone. If I just go ahead and add a quick loudness EQ filter, one of the presets from Final Cut Pro, you could see it does start to sound a lot better. And check this out. One of the nice things about this microphone that's actually wired is you can go online and you can spend just a little bit of money on a longer extension cable like this. And you could actually just place it on one of those small tripods that you invested in. And now instead of the microphone being three or four feet away from your mouth, it's only about a foot or two. Now, if you do have one of the Sony cameras with that multi-interface hot shoe on top, this is where you can start to take advantage of microphones like the Sony ECM-B10 or its bigger brother, the Sony ECM-B1M. These things are awesome. I fell in love with the ECM-B1M. I use the ECM-B10 as well. Both of these are amazing microphones. They slide right into the hot shoe. And I find that when I'm out outside filming with this camera, it's just so much easier and simpler just to connect it into the hot shoe, not have to worry about bringing the cable, connecting the cable into the side of the camera. These things, absolutely awesome. They sound amazing. You heard the entire video up before I was using the Rode Video Micro was being used with this ECM B1M. I'm sorry, the ECM B10. Super simple best option out there as far as simplicity goes for the Sony system. Of course, you do have some wireless options as well. I opted for one of the top of the line ones. I opted for the DJI Mic 2. Really enjoy these microphones. They're super discreet. I usually just connect them either inside or outside my shirt. And now the microphone pretty much just stays with you. Now, an obvious advantage to this microphone is you can literally stand all the way across the room and check it out, you, I'm all the way over here and you could still hear me really well. Whereas if we use something like this, the further away we get, the more of the echo you're gonna hear. And if we use something like a wired shotgun microphone and we just boom it, we're gonna have to run that wire all the way across the room, which is not a huge deal, but it is just kind of nice to not have to deal with wires. All right, next up, we're gonna talk about lighting. This is not the most cinematic lighting that we can get in this environment. This is a much better example of cinematic lighting. So when it comes to lighting, you don't just want to turn the lights on in the room. You want to take the time to actually think about where you're going to place the lights and where you're going to place the darkness. So for right now, this is much better since before I just had the ceiling light on, which is right above. Then I decided to turn it off, close the blinds, put some covers over the blinds since the blinds don't block a lot of the light and turn on my big light that I actually have right over there. What this does is it lights me, the subject of the video, much better. And especially since the light is coming from the side, it does create a bit of a shadow on the other side of my face. But this is where you can really make your videos look a lot more cinematic than just what I used to do was just like I said, just turn the lights on, open the window, and that's it. Now what I also did was this light is $50 on Amazon. You can see it's actually a pretty big light. It does come with the remote control, so I could turn it off. There you go. You could actually see that much better. So $50 on Amazon, it does just plug into the wall, so it requires power. Not too bad. You can also see that I 
bled out the lights or bled out the natural light from the sun as much as I could. I don't have any curtains right now. Now here's an example of very, very poor lighting. You can see I have an insane shadow on the side of my face. I have harsh light coming in from the window with no blinds right now. And it overall just looks like the back is lit more than me. Whereas even turning the camera around without the light on, without my big light on, you could see now this does look just a little bit better. It doesn't make you focus on the background as much. And if we just turn that light on, I can raise it, I can lower it. Overall, this is how you get good lighting. Now, something else you don't want the light to be directly behind you, especially if you wear glasses like me, you could probably start to see the reflection of the light in your glasses. A 45 degree angle from the side is going to give you a bit of that shadow. And this is what you see when you're watching cinematic movies, cinematic films out in the movie theater. Now I showed you the light that I basically use. That's like my main light. I did get some other lights just from Ulanzi. These are $25 each. I got one of them a little while ago and I liked it so much, I decided to get a second one. And these are USB-C rechargeable. They're super lightweight. So what you could do is you can just screw it to one of those small tripods that you invested in, like this Ulanzi one, pop it open. And now you've got a light that pretty much stands almost as tall as you if i'm six feet tall so this probably stands at around five feet tall with this tripod i can put this light right here and i can light myself super simple super easy it doesn't take up a lot of space at all and yeah these things are absolutely awesome now something else you can do which is both easier and more complicated is just rely on that natural lighting if you have a bright apartment or a bright house and you're filming inside during the day this is going to be super easy since you just open your windows open your blinds and you're good to go a couple of mistakes you're going to want to avoid you're going to want to make sure any lights behind you are turned off this is an example of having that light turned on and you can see it just looks kind of weird that light up there it's lighting the back of me right now this is not something what you want to do you want to create that contrast of having the darkness behind you and the light on you having the windows and the natural sunlight light you is going to be a great start now obviously don't make this mistake the lighting is going to be trash and the camera is crooked as well see i have my camera on auto exposure auto white balance right now look at how blown out the background looks don't do this i've done this before you don't want to do it what you could do is just kind of move the camera around a little bit and again make that light hit you from about a 45 degree angle now we're starting to get a little bit of that shadow on our face check that out if you have the light hitting you from one side a bit too much you're going to see that it's going to be just a little too harsh maybe this is what you're going for if you're heisenberg and your brother-in-law just found out what you're actually been, been doing so this might help you tell a better story but for the majority of the time i find having the light from 45 degree angle works out the best now let's see what we can do over here let me show you the setup so these are the windows this is our light source right over there you can see we've got the blinds closed and overall this is what we're working with is the camera still moving yeah the camera is still overall make make sure your tripod's tight as well otherwise the camera is going to start to drift off on you like it did for me and now overall this isn't bad we do have some darkness behind us but on our face we don't really have a lot of those shadows so let's give it a shot let's see if we can just turn on that little bit of a light now we've got a nice side light coming on again it's just this little ulanzi light right here we put it right there let's move it around we could also, that's a little too bright. See the harsh lighting? That is way too harsh. It's creating a shadow right now, but it's a little harsh. Something like that. This is actually probably what I would pick just because now we do start to get that shadow on the side of our face and it does light us nicely. Let's go ahead. There's a light over here. Now this doesn't look that good. That looks a little bit too much like you're just not in the cinema. Let's see if we can open the blinds a little bit just to try to rely on that natural lighting. There we go, that's actually pretty nice. You can see I have the light hitting me over here and I have a bit of a dark shadow over here, but my face isn't totally dark over here. We do have some darkness in the background as well, creating that contrast as far as dark in the background, brighter up front. The subject, myself, yours truly is lit properly. So you can see how it just does require a bit of trial and error since we can't move the sun and move the entire house around. Whereas using a small light like this on a small tripod, we have more control and flexibility where we can place that light. 
we can't actually move the sun or move the house around. Now here's one mistake that I started to make when I got this nice camera and this nice lens. If I get up close, pay attention to the bicycle, pay attention to that. See how blurry that background is? This is a very wide aperture lens. It goes down to all the way to f1.8. This creates that cinematic background blur, but that doesn't tell the whole story. You can see if we go all the way up, now everything is nice and clear but we still do have that contrast since the background is dark and I am brighter and I have light over here, shadow over here. This still looks better than just cranking the aperture, cranking the lens wide open. You get that nice cinematic background blur. There's too much light behind me, not enough light in front of me. Overall, this is not a very good shot to look at and this definitely is not something that they would normally use in cinematography or when filming an actual movie. Which now brings us to the next technique, camera placement. Now I've been demonstrating camera placement for pretty much this entire video. Did you notice that I have both hands free and I'm just using tripods and I'm setting the camera down in different areas of my home to get the shot that I want. Now this is huge for me and this is a mistake that I used to make all of the time. Since I really, really enjoy doing handheld videos, it's more fun, it's just easier, it's more dynamic. That is not what you see in cinematography and that's not what you see when you pay to go actually see the movies in real life. For documentary style stuff, sure. A lot of this stuff is fine when you see people just holding the camera or if they go ahead and they just wanna show where they are. Hold on, I gotta fix my ISO. They just wanna walk around a little bit. Maybe they wanna just show Check out the bikes over there, check out the tripod, check out everything. That's documentary style, and that's totally okay. Honestly, that's probably gonna be the easiest thing for you to start off with, just so that you get comfortable using your camera or using whatever camera you're using, iPhone, DJI, big mirrorless, whatever. But remember, we're talking about cinematic films in this video, not documentary films. So one of the best things you can do is set up the tripod and get more stationary shots. Move the camera around your house as you move. That way it seems like the cinema crew is actually following you around and you're just doing your own thing. And if you pay attention the next time you're actually watching a movie, you'll see almost every single shot is locked off on a tripod. There's very little camera movement. And when there is camera movement, it is very, very calculated. And a lot of the times, if the talent is talking, the camera is pointed directly at them. The talent is never behind the camera talking about what they see. That's more documentary style. Now you can really start to have a lot of fun with this. You'll find there's a lot of cool areas in your house or in your apartment that you can prop up your camera. Right now I just have the camera on my small Manfrotto tripod propped up against the fridge and the window being right there, the coffee machine back there. I really like this look. Plus with the f1.8 lens, it does create some nice cinematic background blur. You don't have to get this specific lens. You don't have to spend tons of money to get this look. You could even do this with an iPhone as well. Let me, let, as a matter of fact, let me show you. This is what it would look like without the cinematic background blur. This is just the iPhone's front facing camera. I just have it propped up against the camera tripod right here. So you could see it's not going to look as nice as this, but you could still do it. You could still get away with it. You just have to put more thought into your lighting and your camera placement.
Now, when it comes to filming outdoors, a lot of the same techniques apply. You want to make sure your lighting is on point, so definitely get used to the way the sun hits the side of your face and creates that shadow on the left side of your face. Recently watched a video by Cam Mackey and he said, if you could see your shadow at a 45 degree angle, you're gonna be pretty good. The lighting's gonna be pretty decent, especially right now since it's just 1 p.m. So it's just after high noon time. You're also gonna to wanna to make sure that your audio is on point. Notice I'm actually holding a microphone. That way, no matter what's going on in your environment, you're gonna have crystal clear audio. You're not gonna to have to worry about the wind or it sounds, like it sounds like they're doing construction all the way over there. Now you've also got a couple of different techniques as far as handheld camera movements and stationary shots. Mainly there are three different shots. There is a static shot, like what you're looking at right now. There is a handheld shot where you're actually filming yourself. So it's gonna look something like this. You're gonna see your arm coming out. There's a handheld walking shot where you're filming yourself. And there's also handheld shots where you're filming away from you for B-roll, standing there static, acting like a tripod, and also walking as well. Now, generally handheld moving shots, that's more documentary style. You really want to make sure that you go out of your way to try to find static shots, especially shots like this. You noticed a lot of the shots in the earlier sequence of the B-roll was me walking by the camera. It didn't look like I was filming myself. It looked like you were just sitting in a window or sitting on a bench and you saw me walking by you. The camera was stationary. That is what you want. Now that is also the hardest because you really have to think. It helps if you know your environment. It helps if you're, you know, you don't want to take your expensive camera and go all the way out to Times Square or somewhere in New York, in the middle of New York City, not on the outskirts of New York City, because then your big expensive camera can actually be at risk of being stolen. So handheld shots like this, while they can be a lot easier to do, especially if you're just trying to film what you're experiencing, this is more documentary style. And remember, we're trying to film cinematically, film ourselves cinematically in an outdoor scenario. So this, although this is the easiest, because then you could also just turn it around and showing where you are, that's more of a documentary style. Now, the next step up would be just standing and talking. And even if you mounted the microphone somewhere you can see, now it looks even more cinematic or more cinematic than if you're walking. You could also get some cinematic shots like this, just some static shots of the pool in the background, some of the people. That's gonna be one step up. But if you really wanna make it look like a cinematic vlog or a cinematic video, you've really gotta go out of your way to try to set the camera up somewhere. That way you can just walk up it and walk by it. That way it's handheld, it doesn't look like you're actually operating the camera, even though you kind of are. And now a lot of popular creators, popular vloggers back in the day used to do this with big DSLR cameras. I'll show you how I do it right now. Basically I have my little DJI Action 4 and I just have a little GoPro mount and I just have it clipped to a tree right there. Check it out. So you see how easy that is. And this is super helpful just because this camera is $300. So in the event that someone does run by and grab it, I'm not out a couple of thousand dollars. I'm just out a couple of hundred dollars. And I would highly recommend if you want to take your videos to the next level, especially outdoors, definitely get one of these cameras. You could even do it with an old GoPro. GoPro is okay, but I like the DJI Osmo Action for the best, just because you could see the microphone connects right up to it. So I can be at the other side of the park and still talk and you're still going to be able to hear me. So this is something that you really want to think about when you're going out there trying to film more cinematic videos. Now again, when it comes to lighting, it can be a lot harder to control lighting when you're outside. A good rule of thumb is just make sure the sun isn't directly in front of you or directly on the side of you. Try to position yourself so that the sun is either hitting 45 degree angle from the front or 45 degree angle from the back. So if we play around with this lighting, let's see how this looks. I can feel the sun over here. I can't see because I'm about 10 feet away from the camera right now, but it's probably pretty dark on the left side of my face. And just judging by looking at my shadow, my shadow's over there. This is probably okay. Again, lighting's probably a bit harsh, but this is something you could just go ahead and play with the exposure in post. Just 
very, very little, just slide them up and down. I'd probably just lower the exposure a bit and then not make it seem so contrasty. This is what happens when you film in the middle of the day. You could always just try to film not in the middle of the day, early morning or late afternoon, early evening. I like to just film when I have the time and a lot of times that's around lunchtime, around the middle of the day. So do what you will, but it's definitely easier if you film during the sunset or the sunrise. But again, like I said, editing in post doesn't take that long at all. It's pretty easy. Also, one thing you could do is try to find an area like this that has a lot of trees, or if you can go underneath a train trestle or train tracks like we were before, the Amtrak is right over there. This is going to create some cool lighting effects. The trees, the train tracks, the bridges, this is going to almost act like a big filter for that bright sun, and it's going to give you much softer lighting, and overall it's going to look more cinematic. So definitely something if you live next to a park or next to an elevated subway line or train, definitely something to think about when you're trying to look more cinematic. B-roll. B-roll is one of the most fun things about going out there and filming. I always feel kind of like a photographer. The only difference is I am just hitting record and letting the video record for 10 seconds rather than just clicking a still frame, still frame in time. I'm letting it go for 10 seconds. This is where the iPhone with all of its different lenses, the ultra wide, wide, medium, and telephoto length, can really be super versatile and honestly for filming in the day and even sometimes in low light it's all you need I purposefully left my big expensive camera home just to show you that you don't need to spend a ton of money when you're going out there and filming videos in public you're trying to make them look more cinematic you could see with this camera if I get up close there's absolutely no background blur this is a cheap but really good action camera Cinematic background blur is cool, but honestly, it's just so much easier to carry small, lightweight cameras. If I could do it, you could do it. It's totally possible. So there you go. That's how you can make your videos look more cinematic, whether you're filming indoors or outdoors. If you follow the tips that you've learned in this video, I guarantee you, your videos are going to come out much better, and you're going to have a lot more fun doing it. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.